Okay, sorry that took a little while. Um, I lost a bunch of my slides. like So I can't actually post everything. I don't have time to go back and fix all this. You can see the pictures are not there. I don't know what happened. But um, hopefully you can just use the pictures from, uh, you know, these, these recordings. I'll, I guess I'll just post whatever I have because some of them are still there. Okay, but you do have all the recordings. So we're going to arthropods. This is our last phylum. They are, uh, along with nematodes, they're in a nematoda phylum. They're in the um, Egyptozoa, uh, open circulatory system, complete digestive system, and really this exoskeleton is a real big characterization of them, and particularly the jointed appendages. So that's what arthropoda means. Obviously, poda we know is feet, and arthro means jointed, like arthritis, you know, disease of your joints. So these are jointed feet. Uh, and that's what we're going to see in there. I uh, have segmentation. So here's the segmentation. Oops. Uh, we have head, thorax, and abdomen. So you'll want to know those three parts. Um, the head is the most anterior. It's going to be where their little antennae are, if they have any. So the head. The thorax is the next section of the body. Um, some of you might be familiar with like thoracic cavities where your lungs are in a human or your T vertebrae, they're, um, uh, sort of midway down the back on like right where your lungs are as well. So the T's are for thoracic. So that's what, so head, thorax, and then abdomen. So, um, the part we think of sometimes as the tail part is actually the abdomen of the organism here. So like a crawfish or a lobster, that's all the abdomen. Of course, there's, sorry, lots of modifications to this structure. Uh, they tend to have three legs, three sets of legs, I should say, and two pairs of wings uh, for the insects at least. Then lots and lots of other pairs of legs, uh, all different kinds of combinations for these are crustaceans. And then uh, arachnids are going to have their own sets of four legs, which I'll show in a second. Okay, so sometimes the head and thorax are fused. So this is like this lobster, it's a cephalothorax, meaning head, thorax, and then the abdomen. So it still has its sort of three, but cephalothorax, abdomen, head, thorax, abdomen. Okay, so one group is the chelicerata. Oh, okay. Um, so in that group, we're really concerned in this case <clears throat> about this class called arachnid, arachnida. So the arachnida class is the one you need to know. Um, that includes the spiders, scorpions, mites, and ticks. So all these guys you're seeing here. And they have what we call chelicerae, which are their um, pinchers or fangs. So like on a spider, you know how it has those fangs? Those are chelicerae. And that's one of the ways you tell it's an arachnid. Another way is its amount of legs. So you see they have four pairs of walking legs. So the scorpion, one, two, three, four pairs of walking legs. This spider, one, two, three, four pairs of walking legs. And even this dust mite, one, two, three, four pairs of walking legs. So that would be how you identify an arachnida class. Uh, and you can see here, again, four walking legs. So here's all your spiders. You don't need to know which one's which. You have, uh, don't worry about that. But um, they are. And then the chelicerae, know how to spell that. <clears throat> That's um, their pinchers or fangs for feeding. Okay, the second group, the subphyla of arthropods is called myriapoda. Poda foot, myria, like myriad, meaning a lot. So a lot of feet. These guys have lots of feet. They're your centipedes and millipedes. And the good news is that all the C's go together. So the class you need to know is Chilopoda. Uh, that's going to be your centipedes, and they are carnivores. These are also, you tell, by one pair of legs per segment. So you see every segment has one pair of legs. So centi is like century, like um, 100. 
Um, whereas milli is um, like a thousand, like a milliliter compared to a centi or, or a million you can even think of, whatever you want to think of. Um, so we have hundreds to thousands or millions. And so obviously centi is going to be less than milli. So that's how you can remember one versus milli has two pairs of legs per segment. Diplo, poda, di, diplo, meaning two legs per segment, and they are herbivores. So you would want to know the name, what that is, how many pairs of legs per segment, and what they eat, as in carnivore, herbivore, and you see how they go together. Okay, the subphylum crustacea is the one where we have our crayfish we're going to look at in a moment. Um, they are going to have uh, these hard exoskeletons, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're not really worried too much, but I did want to show you, and you would need to know besides the crayfish, what other groups are in the subphylum crustacea. And that's going to be your crabs, shrimp, barnacles, that's what these are, lobsters, your krill, so they're like tiny shrimp-like um, the heck they called? You know, the plankton, plankton. They're tiny shrimp like plankton. And then even your roly polies or your pill bugs, sow bugs, whatever you call them. Uh, those are actually crustaceans. They just happen to live on land, but they still need to be in a moist environment. But most of the rest of these guys live in water. So that is in addition to your <clears throat> crayfish. So here's subphylum crustacea, phylum. It should be arthro. Sorry, let me change that. Everyone says it like that. Arthropoda. Okay. Uh, and you can see here the cephalothorax, head and thorax, and then the abdomen, what we would consider a tail when we say we're eating it, but really that's the abdomen. Telson is the little um, actual tail part. That's the middle part here that helps it steer and swim sort of. And then the carapace, or the carapace, is the um, as the fused armor, really, that covers up the gills. So the gills are going to be underneath this carapace. And actually, you can kind of open it from underneath. If you look under, this is the ventral side. Obviously, this was dorsal and on the right side of the organism. You can see its eyes, uh, two pairs of antennae, pinchers. One's larger and the other smaller. And then we notice um, really quite nicely the segmentation. There's its mouth. It has all kinds of modified appendages there. Uh, and then here's our walking legs. So we have four pairs of walking legs. And then we have a bunch of other appendages on the abdomen called um, swimmerettes. So they're small appendages. There's our telson again. And using those appendages, the swimmerettes, we're going to be able to tell if it is a male or female. So uh, on females, they all look the same. All the swimmerettes look uniform. On males, most of the swimmerettes look the same as the females, except for um, the, pa the two pairs right um, next to the walking legs. So this one and this one. Uh, and you can see they're much larger, and they actually fold up onto the abdomen. So they're number three. Um, so here and here, they're pushed to the side. But really, they'll end up looking like this and folding up onto, uh, not the abdomen, I'm sorry, the thorax. Gosh, this is the abdomen. So they fold up onto the thorax, like where the walking legs are. And what those are going to do is the uh, they're going to come and make a little slide, sort of. So when the sperm comes out, it can get deposited right here in this a seminal receptacle. So the female, it doesn't go inside. I don't think it just gets stored until she releases her eggs and then she releases the sperm at the same time. Um, so that's how you tell if it's a male. It'll have like bigger swimmerette, uh, modified swimmerettes. We call those either copulatory swimmerettes or pleopods. So you'd want to know one of those two names if it was a male or if you were to ask to identify how would you know it's a male versus a female does not have those. Um, okay, going inside, if we look, the, the thing we notice is are some gills. This is that carapace on the side of 
the organism. Um, the anterior in this picture is going to be actually down here, um, it's upside down, but it doesn't matter. In any case, the gills are behind the carapace, and here we've taken the carapace off. You can see they're nice and feathery. They don't look quite this feathery in real life, but they are, uh, and there's the gills. So that's what they use for breathing. We also are going to look here, the gills, so now we're a little bit further into the organism, so, or more anterior, um, and so this is, these are the eyes, so that's where you can tell how you, where you are. Um, we have our stomach, so it's actually two stomachs put together. I don't care if you know which was which, you just want to know that this structure is the stomach. It includes this part here as well. And this is our stomach taken out. You can pretty much see that there are two parts to it. Uh, and this is it upside down, and you can actually see the esophagus, then the little hole there, um, that that's where it was attached to the body. Uh, not the body, but the rest of the digestive system, I should say. So that's the stomach. If we take um, a look further and uh, posterior, here's that stomach, and I just want to show you what it looks like so you're oriented. Uh, and then we get even further posterior, so we've gone from here, and we're going to go down to this area, and that's going to be where we see our intestine. So the intestine will run um, down the abdomen. I mean, it runs underneath all the organs uh, in kind of the, the thorax region, and then we will... Uh, the waste will exit at the anus, which is by the tail. Uh, this is back to the anterior. So here's the egg, eye stalks again, these individual movers for the eyes. Uh, right behind those, we have the brain. It's this little collection of neurons right here. Coming out from the brain, we have some nerve cords, which are going to run ventrally. So it's going to go one ventral nerve cord, so that'll be on the belly of the organism. And of course, all this dissection is looking from the dorsal side, so we cut the back off. Uh, and then right up there, we also have these two kind of pancakey structures called green glands. The green glands are going to be uh, excretory structures, but mostly in the sense of um, keeping a water balance. That osmotic balance is what really the green glands do that. But you can, I mean, that's an excretory function. So they do some nitrogenous waste processing, some osmoregulation. But if you just say green glands and excretory, that will be fine. But they are up, very, very anterior, right kind of in uh, behind the head region. Uh, and they actually release their products uh, out by the mouth. Uh, it'll be somewhere up here. These are also, these are muscles to close the mouth. They might look similar to clams. Okay, this is not as clear, but I just wanted to show you, sometimes they're not as big as these green glands. So this is another crawfish I have, so these are its green glands. But it's way up in the interior region, and then the pancakey things. Uh, and then this is a female. This is the one, this one. Uh, and she actually has eggs in her ovaries, and I want to show you that. So this is, um, here's the abdomen, and then here are the gills, and so the thorax is, the cephalothorax is up here. So here, her ovary with, and the uterus are all the reproductive parts, and you should see her eggs inside there. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat that you could see that. Okay, so that's going to be your crayfish which is a crustacea. Um, really, it's a crustaceous subphylum. It may be asked as what class is it, and that's fine. Crustacea is what we're going to count it as. Insecta is another subphylum, and this is where our, our grasshopper is, so um, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. So these guys don't have a fusion going on like the crustaceans. They have separate head, thorax, abdomen. So here's the head, here's the thorax, and this part here would be the abdomen and its wings on top. Um, they have three pairs of legs, walking legs. Antennae, eye. Mm. The spiracles are important. So, um, you know, this crustaceans use the gills to breathe. A lot of the organisms we've seen use just diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide across their skin to breathe. Uh, these um, insects are going to use spiracles and trachea tubes 
to breathe. So this is the spiracles are these dots. They're not the line. They're the dots. They're just openings into the abdomen. And we will look at, um, try to look at the grasshoppers and look at the um, tracheal tubes. Um, but grasshoppers are kind of mushy. So it's not your fault. They just are. Even the dissections in the lab manual are hard to see. So we're just going to look at the model. So there will be a mod there will be organisms there to look at as well, but I think you can get everything from the model that you need to know. Uh, and so you can try to correlate it, but basically uh, this part here is the crop, which is part of the foregut, so the mouth is here, the brain. So the mouth that comes in, the food goes through the pharynx and then into um, the crop. So pharynx and then this is a crop, and then that's all foregut. And then the foregut to midgut transition has these gastric cica. So you want to know those gastric cica are secreting the digestive enzymes there. So the cica is with a C, but it secretes digestive enzymes to help break down the food. So there is a gizzard um, behind here, and that's going to be where you're grinding up and breaking down the food. Uh, and the cica, will, the gastric cica will help that. Like, and gastric means... Um, stomach. So you can think of it that way. It's the gastric cica. Then we're going to go to, um, so I'll just show you the rest of this. Kind of grayish is all the rest of the gut tube. And um, up here, these are actually ovaries with eggs in them. So it's going to be on both sides. And um, we have the circulatory system up here, like this is the, the heart and, and um, dorsal blood vessel. Then you see the brain comes down ventral nerve cord, like most of these things, ventral nerve cords. Uh, and then at the end here, we can tell this is a female. She has eggs. But if we didn't know that externally, we can tell it's a female because she has what we call an ovipositor, which is this kind of... Um, uh, branched structure here it has like two sides to it uh, and here's the actual opening because you can see her eggs will come out right there here and so we call this the ovipositor and so females are the only ones that have that so if you are to look at a, a grasshopper um, it would be very clear if, if it has an ovipositor or not and if it does not have one doesn't have like two pointy things then it's a male if it has the two pointy parts on the posterior it's a female uh, and then if we look closer up, you really can't see it on this picture. Sorry, it's not very clear. Um, but here would be the midgut. So there's the gastric cica. So the midgut. And then there's this, there's all these squigglies on here. You can see. Um, I think they might be purplish. And all the squiggles, those are malpighian tubules. So malpighian tubules, that's the excretory system of the grasshopper. Insects have those. So if you'll notice, we've had three or four different types of excretory systems. So in the um, grasshopper, we just saw malpighian tubules. Sorry. Um, way back, so insects. Okay, and we also saw in the um, uh, flatworms, the platyhelminthes, we saw that they had what we call proto-nephridia. Um, there was a, a cartoon of that, I think um, you saw that. If not, let me here. In the flatworm, like the turbularia, which is the, pl the planaria, uh, here are the um, proto-nephridia. And flame cells. So that's going to be your excretory structure there. And that's also from that lecture online. So protonephridia in the platyhelminthes. Then in our annelids, like our earthworm, we had the metanephridia. So it's like proto is the really early type, and then meta is a little bit more, um, you know, developed, if you will. Those are the little coils inside each of the uh, segments of 
the earthworm. Um, I guess my earthworm pictures went away. Yeah, so I don't have that. Um, and then we have the green glands in the crustaceans, or at least the crawfish. And they are going to also be excretory organs. So all these are guys. Are going to be the excretory organs that we've seen. Okay. Uh, also, I wanted to say that um, the kind of firsts, so there are certain firsts that we have. So the first true tissues are going to be your cnidarians, right? The first bilateral symmetry. is going to be your uh, platyalmenthes. The first true muscle is going to be also your platyhelminthes. The first true nervous system, it's actually going to be your um, cnidaria with their nerve nets. Then we also have the first um, closed circulatory system. So out of our animals we looked at, that would be the annelids. That's the only ones we really looked at that have closed circulatory. Everything else is open or has a gastro, um, gastrovascular cavity or no circulatory system at all. So the annelids, that's the earthworm. If you've looked at the notes or um, actually this Numerta, you can look that up, which is called the ribbon worm. Those are really the first ones, but I don't care about that for you right now. Annelids are fine. Uh, and then the, the first, um, let's see, what else do we have? Oh, complete digestive system. Like the hal alimentary canal. In ours that we've looked at, it's going to be our nematodes. But you might have seen these rotifers in your notes. The rotifers really are the ones with the first complete digestive system, but in ours, we have nematodes. So I don't, either one of these, I don't, you can do either one of those, and I would count both of them. So these are the firsts. Um, okay, that's what I got for you. I hope. This has helped some, and um, I'll see you tomorrow.